What's going on my PT peeps and my Walking Dead family? Welcome to the PT channel. I'm One Eye Bright, also known as PT, and I'm back to talk about Fear the Walking Dead Season 5, Episode 2. Spoiler warning, obviously, for Fear the Walking Dead Season 5 as a whole, but definitely Season 5, Episode 2. Now, overall, I thought the episode was, eh, okay, it was a setup episode, but overall, the episode was kind of slow. We got some more story. We got some things building for the rest of the season, but the big thing was Strand going to meet Daniel and Daniel being alive. I got questions. How did he get there? Is he all alone there? What is going on with Daniel Salazar? But Strand is not to be trusted according to Daniel Salazar and I don't blame him. I mean, the last time they saw each other, he got shot in the face, but I wanna know how Daniel got to this place and he's got a lot of stuff here. But the interaction with Strand and Daniel and Skidmark was interesting. And it was pretty foolish for Strand to go there unarmed, not to take out Daniel, but the walkers, especially at the end, he's going back with no weapons. He had a rock and he's beating this one zombie up and he's doing this and that. It's like, all right, what's going on here? But Strand and Daniel, we got to see that. We also got to see what was up with danger, keep out, the radiation, the nuclear reactor, the meltdown. I'm glad they talked about that because that would probably happen in a zombie apocalypse. Morgan got trapped in the ropes from the bird box things, it was pretty interesting. Well, I guess she shot the ropes at the ankles, uh, just didn't really get too much out of that. But ultimately, the bird box was a good trap for the walkers. And when Morgan was like, dink, 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 would the walker really hear that? But either way, it drew their attention. There was a lot of things there that was like, what? And some of the writing is just like, would they really do that? I don't really think they would just go to look at the signs on the cars and be like, oh, there's a truck there. Oh, we'll look at that later. There could be someone in the truck. And sometimes it's like, it's so unrealistic. I know it's a zombie apocalypse and it's a fictional show, but I would have checked the truck first or saw them driving up and then the truck and then they said something over the radio, but Grace was kind of cool and I can buy into the story. I like that she's going around trying to take out walkers, but would you really do that? Would you continue on? I guess she feels guilty for all the people that died because of the nuclear meltdown. There's the shot right there of the rope around there, but I guess she shot it around the ankles. I, I kind of missed that the first time, but Alicia tackles her and is like yeah i don't trust you i'm not giving you your gun back and i wouldn't either i wouldn't just be giving you your stuff back you don't know this person as for luciana's wound i don't know how it looks like that and to be clear i'm not trying to nitpick on the show and i'm not hating on the show i got questions this is my review and if you don't like it stop watching and there's gonna be that one person like if you don't like the show why are you talking about it but luciana had a pipe in her chest pectoral muscle underneath her clavicle and they're talking about the brachial plexus. It could be around there, but it would be a little higher in my opinion. I know that's a medical thing and I'm a doctor of physical therapy. So stuff like that kind of bothers me when they don't really get it that correct. But I could see where they maybe get that from. And what was up with her being like, I'm going to play the accordion, the accordion. Oh yeah, I'm hallucinating things, the accordion. Should I, do I play the accordion? I'm like, what is up with that? But Luciana being all alone was way over dramatic and her going outside, just run back inside. Why are you trying to fight walkers for it? And then we had the John and June parts again. I guess that's what they're going to do. John and June are going to do this. Alicia and Morgan are going to do that. Strand is going to be with ever, whoever. But we didn't see Sarah, Wendell, or Charlie, or Althea this episode, or Dwighty Boy. It's coming, hopefully, but not this episode. And I thought it was funny when they went to the camp. And I have to admit, I love the little one-liners and the little dialogue that John has. I don't know. I just like this character more and more every episode. But it's just funny when it says Camp Crackleberry, Texas. Does it really have to say Texas? Wouldn't it just say Camp Cackleberry or whatever? It has to say where it is in Texas. I don't know, I don't get the sign. But also when Strand was walking, you saw El Paso. So they're still in Texas, I believe. But you saw a battle went down at this campground. And hopefully we get to see what happened here. Annie, Dylan, and Max were probably there. We didn't see them this episode, but I do wonder where they went. As for John and June, I do like them talking about the past and where they were and where they came from. I thought their interaction was one of the best parts of season four, the first half, because it was definitely two different parts of last season. Then we saw the Alicia Grace Morgan situation, and Alicia is a character that I like, and I just don't get why she's using that same weapon. It's probably her iconic weapon, just like Morgan's staff and John's guns and all the other weapons that people have that are their iconic weapons, but this weapon 
is pretty basic. And yes, it can cut a walker and slash a walker and it's very solid and it's not gonna break down, but it's very limited. And if she loaded up all these guns and ammo and all the stuff in the crate that someone took, you should have a gun on you with some ammo. And I believe she had a gun on her. She could have used it there and done this and you know, shot one and stabbed one and shot one because there's a bunch of them. And also when the walkers went into the mud, they're like crawling and this and that. And she didn't know where it went, the one contaminated walker, but they got out of the mud pretty easily, I thought, right? They were in there and crawling towards them and going and then they got up and it was just a little too dramatic for my liking. I mean, you gotta have the drama and you gotta have this and you gotta have that, but it was just a little too much. Alicia and Morgan and everybody should be able to take out walkers with ease. I don't know why it's still over the top while it's a big deal, but I did like the contamination thing that was kind of setting up hopefully something for the rest of the season with Grace and the other walkers, the contaminated walkers. So we'll see if that comes back around and it's pretty interesting. I mean, it would be pretty crazy if someone shot one of those walkers and radioactive particles started to burn someone or something. You can see that mutated walker right there and also the disseminator around the neck. And you gotta feel bad for Grace because she made a decision that was ultimately a bad decision and had all these people that worked with her at the power plant and they ended up dying because of her. I don't know if she was a manager or what, but it was just the bad decision. Upper management at its finest, right? They put in policies that don't work for most things. Nah, I'm just kidding, but it sounds a little bit like that. As for Morgan's bow staff, I kind of feel bad for him because the bow staff reminds him of Eastman and where he's come the clear method of thinking and it's just interesting to see if he's going to get that back hopefully grace can clean it and do something because that's morgan's weapon and i kind of hope he gets it back and it's pretty crazy to think about it luciana and strand being connected over the radio unless they knew the frequencies where they're supposed to be at and the channels and everything i don't again i'm not a radio guy i don't know if it's hard to reach them or not but i would assume you have to be on the right channel and the right frequency to communicate with each other and luciana what are you doing going outside like that you're all banged up you're all hopped up on medicine you can't be thinking straight you shouldn't have left and i wonder what's going to happen with john and june going forward i ask this every time because they're building something up i believe i don't know if i'm just reading too into it or not but previously on The Walking Dead, relationships with a medical person and relationships in general are not good in the zombie apocalypse. I don't know if they're setting things up to happen with these two this season. As for the pile of bones and ash and stuff there, that was kind of crazy. That was a lot of walkers that were burned up there. And also there was a lot of walkers inside those cabins. And I'm not sure what this was all about, but I'm guessing it was Morgan reflecting on his past when he was all about clearing and taking out walkers. And before he probably would have taken out all these walkers, but it had to change. And I just wonder if Alicia was here like, yeah, Morgan, I got it. Okay, you've been where I was, uh-huh, yeah. Does anybody just want to tell Morgan like, yes, stop preaching to me. I understand what you're going through, but I'm going through a lot too. I can take out a lot of walkers and be like, I can do it. It's not a big deal. Sure, I understand where you've been, but enough, Morgan. I got it. And to be honest, I might be like, all right, we got it, Morgan. I'm going to do my thing. You're going to do theirs. We're going to look out for each other. I'm not going to take unnecessary risks, but I got it. And I know Morgan was just trying to help Alicia. I just was like, all right, does anybody feel that way about it? And it's like, what are you doing here? Oh, Luciano, what are you doing? You're like, eh, eh, I can't fire. I don't see what. And all these walkers just came out of nowhere, right? This is how it is. That's what happens on these shows. But it's like, oh, yeah, I can't aim, right? Just run back inside. Just go in. Like, what are you doing? Okay, so you have six bullets and you're probably going to kill one because you can't shoot straight. But either way, you went back inside, you passed out. And I wonder what was up with this. Like, yeah, someone knows we're here. But okay, someone, you know, chopped up the walkers and got the heads and like threw them on the billboard. And John's line was pretty funny. Like, yeah, you just kind of wrote a message or something. You know, why did you have to put it on this big display? Basically, what was this all about? But who did this? I mean, my guess is the whitey boy. If it's not him, what is it all about? And how did you get the heads up there? I mean, you throw them up there and just try to stick where they were. Or did you walk up there with the bodies and this? Like, what did you do? And it's like, Strand, you should have a knife or something here, dude. It's a zombie apocalypse. Yes, you should have went there and showed Daniel I have a knife. I'm going to protect myself. I walked here. You know, what are you doing here? And then when Daniel fired the two shots, like straight up, you're like, yeah, you better move. Those bullets are coming down, right? But it's just one of those things, I guess I'm overanalyzing and overthinking or someone say being overcritical, but I'm just saying how I feel about the episode after watching it. We're like, eh, come on. I guess it's the writer in me that I'm like, come on. It could have been written a little bit better. 
But there you go, guys. That's my thoughts and my review of Season 5, Episode 2. The episode was okay. It wasn't bad, but it definitely was not as good as the premiere, in my opinion. But remember, guys, with hard work, dedication, belief, and sacrifice, you can truly achieve your goals. Believe in yourself. You can do it. It's about love, support, staying positive, making memories. And as always, tell them, Daryl. Yo, we love you guys. Honestly, thank you.